We hear a lot about cholesterol. Whether it's during a doctor's appointment, family reunions with grandparents, or the ubiquitous pharmaceutical advertising. But what exactly is cholesterol? What are the many varieties, and how can you ensure that you have adequate levels of good cholesterol? Scope Care was founded to assist carers, family, friends, and patients undergoing and recuperating from major heart surgery. It is a specialized organization that focuses solely on the cardiac rehabilitation process, providing healing gardens, online resources, meal plans prepared by medical and healthcare professionals, and counseling and support for patients and their loved ones on a holistic recovery journey. While most of us understand that elevated cholesterol does not constantly improve heart health, is it truly as horrible as it sounds? Cholesterol isn't healthy or harmful, it's somewhere in the middle. In truth, cholesterol is necessary for your body, in moderation. It aids in the formulation and maintenance of cells and hormones such as estrogen, steroids, vitamin D, and digestion. Cholesterol, or the fatty material found in your cells, is classified into two types. High-density lipoprotein, HDL, and low-density lipoprotein, LDL. Here's all you need to know about both. What is cholesterol and why is it important? Cholesterol is a waxy, fat-like molecule that is found in blood cells all over the body. Cholesterol, also known as a lipid, is the most common type of fat found in your blood and bodily tissues, along with triglycerides. High levels of lipids, particularly triglycerides and cholesterol, can cause fat deposits or plaque buildup in your arteries. This causes the arteries to narrow over time, raising blood pressure and increasing blood clots and heart disease risk. Cholesterol types. Cholesterol travels as a passenger on proteins known as lipoproteins, which work as a bicycle courier for cholesterol, allowing it to travel from one zip code in your body to another. Lipoproteins are classified into two categories and understanding the distinctions between good and bad cholesterol is critical. According to the American Heart Association, HDL is known as good cholesterol because it removes LDL cholesterol from the arteries and transports it to the liver. It may be broken down and removed from the body. When there is too much LDL cholesterol circulating in the blood, more than the excellent HDL scavengers can scoop up and bury away, it might eventually build up in the form of plaque on the walls of your arteries. This is known as atherosclerosis. According to the AHA, this narrows the arteries over time, increasing the risk of a heart attack, stroke, and peripheral arterial disease. According to the AHA, a high level of triglycerides, the most common type of fat in your body, can lead to fatty buildups in your arteries and raise your risk of heart attack and stroke when combined with high LDL or low HDL cholesterol levels. Cholesterol levels. The lower your LDL cholesterol level, the less risk you face. If you do not currently have atherosclerotic disease or diabetes, a suitable target is fewer than 130 milligrams per deciliter. Remember that LDL cholesterol levels tend to rise with age, so it's essential to monitor them with fairly frequent blood tests as the decades pass. Lipoprotein A, or LPA, is a troublesome buddy of LDL that appears to enjoy adhering to our arterial walls. Healthy activities, such as eating a nutritious diet, seem to have little effect on LPA, mainly determined by hereditary factors. So you can blame your parents if you have this type of LDL. Higher HDL cholesterol levels are encouraged since they reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease, and doctors recommend aiming for 60 milligrams per deciliter or higher. You should be aware that numbers alone do not accurately indicate your risk of heart disease with all of that stated. They are instead one component of a more significant equation that incorporates a variety of other variables such as age, smoking status, and stress. If a person has high cholesterol, they might attempt making lifestyle adjustments for three to six months before having their levels examined again. Why are some people more likely than others to develop high cholesterol? Understanding why some people have high cholesterol levels while others do not is not as straightforward as it may appear. According to the AHA, while overweight persons are more likely to have high cholesterol, skinny people might also. The following are some of the things that influence your cholesterol levels. 
heredity. Some persons may be genetically predisposed to high harmful cholesterol levels due to a disorder known as familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH. There are two forms of FH, heterozygous, where a person inherits the gene from just one parent, and homozygous, where a person inherits two copies of the abnormal gene, one from each parent. Homozygous FH is more infrequent as well as more hazardous. People with FH do not recycle LDL cholesterol as efficiently, resulting in high levels of this kind of cholesterol, making them more susceptible to atherosclerosis, which often begins at a much younger age. According to the AHA, approximately one in every 200 persons has the FH genetic variant. If left untreated, these people have a 20-fold increased chance of getting heart disease. If you have a parent, sibling, or kid who has FH, or who had a heart attack when they were young, you should be tested for the condition. To keep their cholesterol levels in a healthy range, most FH patients require cholesterol-lowering medications, such as satins. Smoking. While smoking may not cause high cholesterol, it is a major known risk factor for heart disease and stroke. If you also have LDL cholesterol levels, your risk increases. According to the AHA, one reason is that smoking lowers HDL levels, which helps to diminish or eliminate the protective effect of that type of cholesterol. Quitting smoking has an immediate positive impact on your heart health. According to a study published in the journal Biomarker Research, their HDL levels rise virtually immediately when people stop smoking. Diet. According to the AHA, the best strategy to lower your cholesterol is to limit your saturated fat and trans fat intake. The AHA recommends limiting saturated fat to fewer than 6% of daily calories and limiting trans fat to less than 1% daily calories. This includes red meat, tropical oils, fried foods, and full-fat dairy. Choose low-fat or fat-free dairy products, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, chicken, fish, nuts, and non-tropical vegetable oils instead. According to the AHA, healthier cooking oils include canola, corn, olive, peanuts, soybeans, sunflower, vegetable oil, and other specialty oils. According to Dr. Gutierrez, as a general rule, consume a diet that is focused largely on the whole, plant-based foods, and is low in saturated and animal fats. How do you keep your cholesterol under control? There are four crucial things you can do to keep your cholesterol levels in a reasonable range. Eat well. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association discovered that a diet focused on recognized cholesterol-lowering foods resulted in a more considerable decline in LDL values than a diet focused solely on reducing saturated fat intake. While there is no single superfood that may dramatically increase your good-to-bad cholesterol ratio and help you avoid cardiovascular troubles, there are certain eating habits that can pay off big time. Exercise regularly. The good news is that you can ride your way to conquering your cholesterol. An experiment published in the American Heart Journal discovered that regular exercise can improve LDL and HDL counts, LDL size, and triglycerides, regardless of diet. Regular sweat exercises can help improve cholesterol numbers since they keep your body weight in check. Overweight people have higher cholesterol and triglycerides. However, include some intervals in your training regimen because research shows that HIIT exercise might be very beneficial in lowering cholesterol levels. Furthermore, consider picking up the dumbbells a few times a week because resistance exercise, which improves our muscle to fat ratio, is part of the workout equation for healthier cholesterol readings in both men and women. Chill out. Not many people know this, but did you know that if you are stressed, your cholesterol can go through the roof? So go ahead and have a day of walking in a park with your family or friends. It'll keep your cholesterol in check. Releasing your stress will not only lower your cholesterol level, but would also help you avoid other kinds of disease. Last but not least is something you can easily do every day. Laugh more. Laughter is the best medicine, as the saying goes. According to a small study of patients with high cholesterol, those who spent 30 minutes of each day laughing lowered their HDL by 26% at the end of one year. Enjoy every moment of your life and live always with laughter. Scope Care is a secure healing environment for patients and carers, seeking to make every part relatable and motivating. From new and educational social material to stress-relieving walks through the green spaces, subscribe to see more videos like this.